Hey Reddit, when did your somethings not right here gust feeling ever save you? Wife called me while I was at work, just to say she was home from her night shift and planning to go to bed. She had worked night shift for years and never called me just to say she was home and going to bed before. She also sounded weirdly detached on the call. I asked her if she was okay. She said yes. Just really sleepy. I got a weird feeling and told her I was going to leave work and come home. She told me I didn't need to. I said okay. And then I left work and rushed home anyway. Found a suicide note taped to the garage door. I got to her in time. Rushed her to the air. And got her the help she needed. A week of impatient psych. Followed by changes to medications and doctors. This was about 5 months ago. And she is so much better now. Dang. Give your wife a hug from me. It frickin sucks to feel that way. So glad you were able to help her. I used to just drive around country roads when I would feel stressed out or sad as a way to just get away and listen to music. One evening I was driving with my best friend in the car and we're on a gravel road that has a huge hill. We were driving towards the sunset but it was winter and the light was fading fast. As the car started down the hill I had this moment where I thought to myself my bright should be on and I flicked them on and at the bottom of this super steep hill stood 6 deer on the road. I slammed on the brakes and the car turned sideways and skidded to a stop like 4 feet from the deer. Those stupid deer didn't even move. They just stared into the passenger side of my car and my best friend pointed at them and said hey, dear, the car was fine, we were fine, and Bambi was all good, I don't drive around like that anymore. They run away when you tell them to get a job. Every deer that doesn't move when I talk to them, no matter what, will every time run away when I say, get a job. They really don't want to work. My mom and her entire family were saved from dying from carbon monoxide poisoning by her dad. He left for work, got a weird feeling and drove back home. Everyone in the house was unconscious, and he had to drag or carry them all outside one by one. They all survived. My sister since she was about 5 was always obsessed with tsunamis and would always ask my dad every night before she went to sleep if there would be a tsunami that night. We lived on a beach. About 5 years later when our family was holidaying in Samoa an earthquake struck at about 6am. It was only a dull low rumble but went on for over a minute. Everyone at the resort woke up and went outside for a few minutes then went back to bed. My sister having been obsessed with tsunamis ran down to look at the water and notice the sea going out and saved a lot of lives including my own. There was about a minute from her noticing till that tsunami hit. Luckily for us there was a cliff right behind the resort if not a lot more people would have been killed. So something like a gut feeling 5 years in the making. Not me but my science teacher. When she was a teenager she was standing near some lights at a pedestrian crossing with her and her friend. Very chill but out of nowhere she had this gut feeling that both of them had to move. They moved just a couple meters away and the next moment a car had hit another car and had hit one of the street electricity utility poles and it had fell and exploded. Minor explosion enough distance away that it didn't hurt the girls. Exactly where they were. One of the wires had also snapped and hit it exactly where they were standing as well. They basically were in a scene of car wreckage and snapped wires and electricity explosions and the pole collapse. Just real insane. If the pole had missed them, the wire would have hit them and if not that then most likely the cars. That gut feeling of moving away saved both of them. I went to hospital with shortness of breath and my heart racing. They did a chest x-ray, blood test for blood clots, ECG, and a few other tests but all came back normal. After observing me overnight everything still looked good. Oxygen saturation was perfect, my heart rate was still a bit elevated but nothing too crazy. And it seemed that it was likely leftover symptoms from a bad virus that I'd had a week or so earlier. The doctor asks me how I would feel if they sent me home and I just had a bad feeling about it all. I told him as such and that I had no real basis for it except that I just felt off about it. He said fair enough. Let's try one more test and if that comes back negative then we'll send you up to general medicine and see if they can track something down. That test was a VQ scan that found despite all other tests showing no results for blood clots, I actually had a whole bunch of them in both lungs. I ended up with a diagnosis of unprovoked bilateral pulmonary embolisms and am on blood thinners for life. Super grateful both for the bad feeling and the doctor who was willing to listen to it. EMT here. 
I was taught if a patient tells you they think something is wrong or they think they are going to die, you need to listen to them. I woke up from a deep sleep at like 2am during a winter storm, something wasn't right. I immediately went looking for my senior dog and couldn't find her anywhere in the house. My roommates had a tendency to let her out for a walk and forget about her, closing the door. I ran to the front of the house and found her laying on the welcome mat. She was hardly breathing and covered in snow. She had been outside alone for at the very least 5 hours. I moved out shortly after. I was learning violin when I was about 10 from an instructor at my local music shop. I got the weirdest feeling from him even though he didn't do anything out of the ordinary. I wanted to vomit every time I looked at him, especially his hands. After 4 lessons I told my parents that I had a terrible feeling about him and I never wanted to go back. Luckily, they listened and didn't make me ever go to him again. A few years later he was arrested for touching multiple of his students. I have no idea how I knew something was off. He never did or said anything but I just felt it. I'm just glad your parents listened. When I was about 10 years old, I was going to the beach with my older sister, her friends and their parents. They had a van that was open in the back, think white creepy van, no seats. The other friends of my sister's friends took turns sitting on the father's lap when he asked if they wanted to steer the van. He then asked me and my gut said no, this man is creepy as frick. The look in his eyes sent shivers down my spine. Once we got to the beach, I forgot all about creepy guy and focused on fun. Fast forward several months later, my sister's friends asked if my sister wanted to sleep over. She refused and my mom and I were baffled as to why she didn't want to go. We kept encouraging her to. Soon she broke down in tears and told us that one night their father had touched her. The van incident and feelings came flying back to me. I wish I had not forgotten my gut feeling and shared it with my mother and sister before anything happened to my sister. Sometimes I still feel guilty over it. That was over 30 years ago. I don't remember what happened to the guy. I just remember a state vehicle at my house a lot afterwards. No one ever talked about it again and I never asked. I want you to know it's not your fault. When I was in college, I lived in a sketchy part of Chicago, Humboldt Park Logan Square before gentrification. I like to take late night strolls, even when I was living in that neighborhood as a 20 year old woman. Yeah, I know, pretty dumb of me. One night, I was feeling stressed out so I embarked on one of my late night strolls. I was walking along a somewhat busy road, cars were zooming past me, pretty normal. I wasn't paying much attention because I was too wrapped up in whatever was stressing me out that night. Suddenly, a chill shot up my spine, hypervigilance washed over me and I became more alert than I had ever been. Something was wrong. Someone was watching me. I quickly spotted a car. It was driving in the opposite direction, a little slower than usual. It was too dark for me to see anyone inside the car, and the car was pretty unassuming. But I still knew something was off. They were watching me. I just knew. The car drove past me and then made a U-turn. Now it was right behind me, creeping along the curb. Luckily, there was a Walgreens a few blocks ahead. I started walking faster, and the car eventually sped past me and disappeared into a corner. I somehow knew I wasn't safe yet, so I still sprinted to Walgreens. I told the security guard what happened, and we both went outside. The car was parked up the street, about 50-100 feet away. The security guard was a big guy who looked intimidating. He marched toward the car, and the car immediately backed up, made a U-turn, and then booked it out of there. The security guard called the cops, and they drove me home. I never took a late night stroll again. My gut made me more alert, but it was really the security guard who saved my life. I'm positive that if he wasn't there that night, something bad would have happened to me. I wish I could find that security guard to thank him. Was sitting on one of those metal cylindrical electricity boxes outside my house when there was a blackout. Electricity was slightly flickering in my house. No other houses had a blackout. I looked down at what I was sitting on and I was like, UHH maybe this is the source of the problem. I stood up and stepped away from it and like 2 seconds later it freaking blew up. Like a pillar of flame shot out and above it for almost a full minute. It was basically a gigantic Bunsen burner and I was a few seconds short of physically getting fried. Last year, the 1st of December, 
I had slept for almost a week trying to fight what I thought was the flu. Woke up and that exact gut feeling kept on telling me something's not right with me. Called the parents to tell them and then cabbed myself to the emergency room. Took blood, the whole 9 yards, was there for 8 hours. Discharged and sent home. Called the next morning asking me to come back because they found something in my blood. Bacteremia and endocarditis. I was put on penicillin immediately. For 2 months. More tests, more things wrong. Went for a specialized test on the 21st of December. Woke up to them telling me I need surgery as soon as possible. They are trying to find a surgical team. Earliest is the 24th. I go in and while they're operating I have an ascending aortic aneurysm and it caused an aortic dissection. They're able to fix it. I've got a synthetic valve in there now. Here's the kicker. I work in a restaurant kitchen. Just before the start of the holiday season. Normally most cooks would tough it out and just work. Most think, it happens and it'll get better soon. Just keep going. There was just something about the way I was feeling this time that made me go to the hospital. I'm told that if I had done that, I more than likely would have died before my birthday and they would have found out about the aneurysm during the autopsy. That still sends freaking chills down my spine. My best friend works as an emergency room nurse at the same hospital that I was operated on and she was freaking out internally but kept it together on the outside for me. She explained just how serious this all was after I was in recovery. I've promised to tell her whenever I get that same feeling again. There's a very fun road that gets you from Niederndorf to Vach, or back, in Germany. You can go 50 or 60 clicks along smooth tight turns and little rolling hills. All around it for acres and acres are fields of whatever's in season and no intersections for several kilometers. It's a very fun road to go too fast on. This day, something like wheat was in and it was high. I couldn't see around the corners, but I knew the road well and was staying in my lane. And I was going fast, and smiling. About halfway in, I heard a voice in my head as clear as if the speaker was sitting next to me and it said, You need to slow down. It was startling and I braked immediately. Two seconds later I come through one of the turns and into the butt end of a combine taking up both lanes and moving slowly. I barely stopped in time. Those extra two seconds of brake time saved a Volvo at least. But I'm pretty sure they saved my life too. If it was an old Volvo, it would have survived and you wouldn't have. If it was a newer Volvo, you would have survived and the Volvo wouldn't have. I went out with my best friend on New Year's last year and were having drinks with her friends when I realized I was out of cigarettes. I left for a few minutes to walk over and grab a pack and ended up talking to a homeless guy for a while. And when I went over to the entrance of the bar she was outside and said something mean to me for no reason and walked off. I was confused so I decided it would be good if I took a walk to let her cool off and then figure out what she was upset about. I was going to walk down the street for a bit but something told me to turn left, walking behind the bar and then turning to the side of the bar when I see a girl laying down on the sidewalk and people walking by her. As I'm walking over to help I realize it's my friend and she's not very conscious. She was probably drugged while I was getting smokes and who knows what would have happened if I hadn't decided to go that way. Scares the crap out of me. I was with a co-worker. He had lied to me about going to a family party of his. But when I showed up, it was just him and I and we went to a bar. I rolled my eyes and just thought I could clench my teeth through it. He knew the owner of the bar and got me alcoholic drinks. I was only 20. I started pouring out the drinks when the dude was shooting pool because I didn't want to be tipsy drunk while dealing with him. That decision honestly saved me. I told him I wanted to go home, but he talked me into taking him home first. So I followed the directions he gave me and I pulled into a hooker bar parking lot instead. He started getting really aggressive and trying to kiss me. I kept pushing him off. I was still trying to be polite but firm and telling him to stop. That's when I noticed the group of guys around my car, talking to my co-worker in my car in another language. He then opened my car door, got out, and proceeded to grab me by the hair to try to pull me out of my car. The other guys gathering around. I had a mind to lock my door when I noticed the other guys. I also had put my car in reverse. So when he grabbed my hair I let off the brake and my car started rolling back so he let go of me. It was terrifying. I told our boss the next day and he quit when our boss asked him about it. You never have to be polite in that situation. 
No one is entitled to your politeness, especially after violating so many boundaries. I'm glad you made it out and sorry you had to go through something that scary. I was walking to the barbershop, and for some reason, everything just felt off. I ignored the feeling but every step I took just made me feel like something wasn't right. So I decided to just go grab some food and come back. While I was eating I saw police cars and ambulances driving to around where I was before. It turns out there was a murder. Now I always listen to my gut feeling. Maybe you smell death. I was offered a dream job at almost double my salary in a different city. It was only 2 hours away, but something told me not to take the job. I had a number of people tell me I would never have another opportunity like this, and my fear of leaving my hometown was holding me back. 2 months after I turned it down, that division of the company was sold, and everyone in that department lost their job. I'd have been stuck in a new city with no friends or family nearby, and no job prospects. You were obviously supposed to save the division. When I was 6 my brother, 8 at the time, and I would go to my grandma's house while our mom worked late some nights. One day I was just randomly thinking about fire alarms. I don't know what caused me to think about it but after I started I couldn't stop. I have had that and this super focus thing so whenever I'm thinking about something as simple as fire alarms it consumes my mind. I asked my grandma and she said she hadn't tested hers in a while. Just for kicks she did and sure enough the batters were dead. She replaced the batters and made sure they worked. The very next morning her house caught on fire while she was asleep. If she didn't hear the fire alarm she wouldn't have been trapped in her room on the second story without a phone or any way to contact help. She most likely would have died. I always make sure fire detectors alarms work in my house now. Plot twist. The new battery is shorted and caused the fire. About 10 years ago. Working security at a site about 50 miles from home, got off shift at midnight, and didn't bother to change out of uniform because I was only going to stop for gas. Two stations in the town I was working in were open after midnight, but it slipped my mind as I drove past the first one, pulled into the other, same brand, same gas price, same sort of dump entirely, and just didn't like something about it. Nobody else around but E. Clark that I could see, but I decided to go back to the other one. He topped off and headed back out of town. I get close to that station again. Three city cop cars, two deputies and a state trooper are outside blocking the road with guns drawn. Turns out a city cop walked in on a robbery. Dude put a bullet in his vest, and the store owner knocked the robber out cold with a bat before the cop could recover enough to get his gun out. That would have been me, in a uniform with a nice shiny badge, but no body armor. Ro, in all earnestness you actually dodged a bullet on that one. So, it technically didn't save me, it would have. Anyway, a couple months after my 10th birthday we went on family vacation to visit my dad's side of the family. They lived a state away. My mom was about 6 months pregnant with my, only, baby brother at the time. We got to our hotel at about 2 o'clock and by 3 o'clock we decided we wanted to make the most of the day and go to the aquarium. I got fully dressed and ready to go and suddenly I was hit with this crippling feeling of dread. At that age I'd never experienced anything like it. Pure anxiety. But I knew. I just freaking knew if we waited 5 minutes I would be fine. I tried telling my mom this and she was having none of it. I even tried to just stall her by begging. Nope. Got dragged out of the hotel and into the car. We pull out of the parking lot and get t-boned so hard we do a 180 into oncoming traffic. As soon as we all realized we were okay I was like, ah, yep, there it is. I've never let either of them forget it either. I'm afraid of roller coasters, mostly heights but they go hand in hand. My friends and I went to a theme park and went on one that was in darkness and went underground. I rode it once, sitting in the back, and really enjoyed it surprisingly. When we reached the start again, there was no line, as it was the end of the day, so they asked if we wanted a final go before they shut down. Something in my gut told me not to go on so, despite my friends nagging, I didn't and waited with the bags. My friends came back around a few minutes later white as a sheet, about 3 stroke 4 of the way through the ride. There's a big drop then it goes fast and just before that, my friend in the back's bar had risen up. Apparently they had to grip onto her for the rest of the ride whilst trying to push the bar back down. Oh god that's my worst nightmare. 
not me, but my mother, saved my grandfather's life when he had a stroke in his chair in their living room. We had all started to walk around the development, when my mother, after about 50-75 meters from the house said, I am going to go back and check on dad. I went with her, and I nearly witnessed my grandfather die. He was on the chair, conscious, but unable to move or talk, just looking at my mother with bulging eyes. She called 9, 1, 1 once, then twice when she felt that they were running late. Ambulance came, got him on the stretcher, but it was too wide to fit out the door. We ended up tearing the door frame off to get him out, because he was conscious. He actually remembers the ride to the hospital. He told us later that he heard the driver or someone say, there is not a chance that this guy lives. That was when I was around 5-6 years old. He is still alive to this day, more than a decade later. At my mother's funeral, part of his speech was about how, without my mother's actions, he would not have been able to spend time with her during her final years of life. And for that, he is eternally grateful. My aunt told me a story about my dad, who greatly dislikes his sister and is an all-around butthole 98% of the time, calling her out of the blue one night while she was in college. She answered. He said he didn't know why but he had this urge to call her, to make sure she was okay. She told him she was fine and thanked him for calling to check on her. She never told anyone else except me, and hopefully a therapist or two, but she was holding the bottle of pills she was planning to commit suicide with right when he called her. 20 some years later and she's very happy with her decision to live. This some Jedi stuff. I was 15 years old and my mom dropped me off at McDonald's to get breakfast while she went across the street to get Starbucks. It was a shopping mall in suburbia and we were on the way to pick up a new kitten a few hours away. Instead of walking the 100 yards to my mom I sat outside waiting for her to pick me up. Teenagers I guess. As I'm standing there a guy in an old station wagon with two kids in the back starts talking to me. He asks me where I'm going and I say whatever town it was. He says he's going there too with his kids and asks if I want to come. I tell him no that my mom is across the street and he comes closer. My gut is saying something is off so I see a random woman walk out of Starbucks and I point to her and say that's my mom right there. He freaked out and left really quick. I still remember those two kids in the back seat. They looked so off. I wonder to this day if they are okay. I matched with a guy on Tinder. We exchanged messages and everything was fine normal we decided we would meet up for coffee in a week a few days after we arranged the coffee date he messaged me saying his father had passed away in those few days he couldn't meet me in public he could only meet me in private at his apartment i trusted my gut sent my condolences but said i couldn't meet him somewhere private he tried to tell me i could trust him because he had a dog i still declined he got really aggressive and started messaging me horrible things he called me every name in the book. I ended up blocking him. I tried to find him later on. And he basically never existed. He could have blocked me on all social media. But I couldn't find a trace of him anywhere. I don't know what the outcome would have been. But I just couldn't do it. In 2004. On Boxing Day. Not me but my mother. Family trip including all cousins and extended family on my dad's side to visit the coastal south of Sri Lanka on vacation. About 20 people in all. Well planned trip. Last moment my mother didn't want to go. No reason at all. None of us could get her to explain why but she refused to go. So we went inland on a different trip to see some other relatives. Around midday, the entire extended family now on both sides were sitting shocked in front of the television watching the very same hotel we booked being washed away live by that tsunami. To date, she still can't explain what she felt. I smelled burning plastic early in the morning at my family cottage and almost went back to sleep. I was around 15, but got up to investigate. A socket on the outside of the building had caught fire and flames were shooting up the wall. The rest of my family was still sleeping and there wasn't enough smoke for the alarms to go off. I ran and got the fire extinguisher, got my dad up, and put it in his hands and pointed him towards the fire, stopped it and called the fire department. I was building a fort in the woods near my house as a kid. Got this eerie feeling that something was wrong so I packed my stuff and made my way home. 
Next day, on my way to school on the bus, my friend mentioned a cougar his family saw running across the road that was within a couple hundred feet of where I was. It just so happened to be at the same time I was out there. We were looking at houses a while back, and found one that was great location, would have been perfect size for us, and didn't appear to need any work other than new carpet, and stuff I wanted to do like painting and switching the it over from oil burning furnace. I just had a nagging feeling about it, and my husband agreed. As much as we loved it something was off with it, I actually thought ghost or something silly like that, and we ended up passing on it. I was still kicking myself about it until a few months later when it had a major electrical fire. The whole house and everything in it was a total loss, and the family that lived there barely got out alive. I don't know if it saved me, but years ago my so at the time had a co-worker that kept inviting us out to drink. I had never met the guy and was wondering why he seemed so eager to meet me, especially since I wasn't even old enough to drink at the time. He eventually told my ex that we should come over to his place for drinks, in order for me to partake. I remember around this time creeping his FB and seeing the squirrely guy posing in front of his Honda. Something about it all made me laugh and wonder why does this 20 something year old want to go to such lengths to hang out with a 17 year old girl he knows is taken? A couple years later he is arrested on a multitude of CP and sexual assault charges. They seized several devices that proved he'd been doing crap with children and animals since he was at least 13. Cherry on top, local star cop's son. I had gone to this bar back home with a few friends and afterwards everyone was supposed to go to this house party. I was game to go from the moment I was invited. Halfway through the night I had this gut feeling to not go. I told my best friend that she shouldn't go but she insisted that she wanted to go because there were a few cute guys there. I couldn't shake the feeling that we shouldn't go, but she talked me into it. When we got in my car to head to the party the guy feeling was worse. I grew up around cars and drive a manual. My best friend is completely clueless when it comes to cars, so I deliberately grinded the gears and jerked the car and made it stall, acting like something was wrong. I pretended to try to fix what wasn't broken and after about 15-20 minutes of fixing my car, cops and fire trucks followed by M's flew by us. I fixed my car but told my best friend that I just wasn't feeling well and she agreed and said my car breaking down ruined her mood. So we went back to my place to watch movies. About an hour after getting home we got a call from a friend of ours saying that the girl who owned the house and who was throwing the party was cheating on her husband who was deployed and came back and leave to surprise her and caught her in bed. With his buddy, a dude pulled a gun and started shooting at this girl and his friend while everyone else fled the house. Few years back I went to uni in Brussels. I would always take the train to get there. One morning I just woke up and didn't feel great at all. Keep in mind I have had a horrible flare up of Crohn's for the last weeks. But this felt different. Guess it was my gut. So instead of pushing through it like I did with my Crohn's, I decided to stay home for once. This was the only day out of two that I ever stayed home from uni. That day the terror attack happened on the train that I usually ride to get to uni. I had a gut feeling I should pull my wallet and phone out of my purse. Not even 20 seconds later, I get mugged. The man dragged me across the sidewalk and stole my purse but all he ended up getting was a juice box and my birth control. Not me but my mom's best friend. July 2000. My mom's best friend Michelle and her husband were out of town. Michelle has this overwhelming feeling of panic and that something was wrong and my mom needed her. Neither of them had cell phones. Michelle felt so uneasy that she made her husband drive them back home. My dad had committed suicide at our home that morning. It didn't save me, but saved a friend. A big group of friends and I were walking home from an event in a town we weren't used to. It was night, and hardly anyone was around. Empty streets and all that. We were walking down a sidewalk that had high fences next to it, so when you turned a corner, whatever was around it was out of sight. One of the girls fell behind distracted by her phone, I think, and I noticed, so I started drifting behind as well to become a sort of midway point between her and the group. Soon, we were nearing where we were staying, and our group rounded a corner, then started making their way into the yard where our living quarters were. I saw the car drive past us. Then turn the corner down the street the girl was still on. As soon as I saw it, I suddenly got this suspicious, 
awful feeling. So I stopped, and went back to the corner to keep an eye on the friend. The car drove past her, stopped, did a complete U-turn, and slowly started creeping up behind alongside her. She was still on her phone, and wasn't noticing a thing. I stepped out from behind the corner, and started walking towards her. The car sped off quickly as soon as the driver saw me. It scares me that someone could have grabbed her, and none of us would have seen a thing. It would have just been one of those cliche movie moments where you turn around, and realize a member of the group is missing. To compound that potential tragedy, she'd just gotten engaged a few weeks prior. I was hanging out with friends at a bar but then going to head to my friends to stay the night. We drove separately though. It was in a city with a super high crime rate and in an even rougher part of town. We left the bar at like 3am and the drive wasn't far, but I was really low on gas and wasn't sure if I was going to make it. I'm not normally a person who's paranoid over city neighborhood crime rates and I spent like half my time in this city and in the area we were in anyway, so it wasn't foreign to me by any means. Even so, just to be on the safe side, I picked a gas station that was well lit and at a relatively busy intersection. I was the only car at the gas station and when I pulled up to the pump I luckily took a moment to text my friend that I'd catch up with him in a few minutes. As I'm doing that, though, another car pulls up right on the other side of the pump that I was at. I have no idea what made me pause, but I just waited a second to let them get out first. But I had to keep waiting, because they weren't getting out. At first, I thought that maybe they were taking a moment to get their wallet, text someone just doing something. I couldn't see through the window tint at all, though, but I also tried to not stare at them or make it super obvious. I'm also not a very intimidating guy. I waited it out for 5 minutes and then started getting more worried. I texted my friend to tell him exactly where I was. I couldn't leave because I didn't have enough gas to get anywhere else and I didn't want to just drive to my friend's place in the event that they followed me. Another 10 minutes later, the car pulled off. No one ever got out to get gas, including me. I just headed to my friends and decided to risk getting there on what I had left in my tank. I'm not sure what made me that paranoid at that moment, but I'm really freaking glad I hesitated. Walking my dog in a park and I saw a teen girl crying by herself behind a building. Decided to trust my gut and went up and asked her if she was okay and she said yes but I pushed her and she told me she was feeling suicidal. Won't dive into her reasons but I just sat and chatted with her about my own struggles with suicidal intentions and gave her my number in case she needed a shoulder in the future. She's doing much better now it seems and though I've moved away, we still text occasionally. My family was out visiting relatives in California when I was about 12 years old. My brother and I were at a beach attempting to bodyboard, with my dad keeping a close eye on us from the shore. At one point, every nerve in my body just screamed die so I ducked under the water. When I resurfaced, there was a surfboard floating away in front of me, some guy frantically swimming after it, and my dad waving us to come to shore. Apparently the second after I dove underwater, the surfboard went over my head. Probably would have cracked my skull open if I had been there. My boyfriend and I were visiting friends for a week in Phoenix. We girls were lounging at the pool while the guys were flexing their grilling skills. My boyfriend paused a moment, stood very still then told me to go get dressed. We had to go. Right now. I wanted to fuss but something told me not to. We drove straight through to San Antonio right to his parents very rural house before cell phones and they didn't have a landline within a half mile. Seconds before we arrived his little sister had jumped off of a rain barrel and landed on a metal spike that went straight up through her foot and into her leg. His dad was at work so there was no car available there. She was bleeding like crazy and his mother had just walked out and found her. I don't know what spoke to him in Phoenix, but it would have been all bad if we had not arrived exactly when we did. I went to go sell an expensive smartphone I got as a gift on Craigslist in Philadelphia. I talked with a guy for a while about it and he just would not agree to meet me inside anywhere. I was young and stupid and needed money so eventually I succumbed. I hit a supermarket nearby and told him where I was, and stayed inside for a few minutes. I then realized how stupid I was for going alone to this sale and not meeting inside in a relatively public place. 
As I walked out a group of unscrupulous looking fellows asked me if I was selling a smartphone on Craigslist. I decided to just stroll on past and get in my car and leave. After they realized I had ditched the meetup I started getting all sorts of threatening text messages and voicemails from this group of guys. I am pretty positive I would have been mugged if I hadn't walked past them because of my gut. My dad had to go to court to settle a way overdue payment for the place he worked at. He was going to take me with him so I can be more exposed to the adult world so to speak. However that meant he would have to leave the office back door unlocked so the rest of the staff could clock in. He suddenly didn't feel right about it and decided to have me man the office instead. He got t-boned outside the courthouse on the passenger side of the car that day. The car was totaled and I would have gotten severely hurt if I was there. Went to buy a TV off Craigslist for $350 with a buddy and the seller cracked the front door enough to say we needed to go through the back entrance. Being dumb we did not think anything of it at the time and went to the back door. We walked 5 steps into the house and noticed all the lights were off and it was dead silent. No TV sounds, no music, no nothing so we noped the frick out of there and drove off. Seller never called us to ask where we went or anything. We both still believe to this day it was a robbery setup and are pretty thankful we did not end up dead or seriously hurt. Never used Craigslist to game crap was sketchy. Not me, but my dad was driving to a client's office to do some IT work for them. He left the house without his coffee mug so thought about stopping to get coffee but he said he just had a weird feeling and decided not to. He gets to the office and goes inside. And 2-3 minutes later there's a massive crash outside. When he comes back out into the parking lot he sees his car and the two parked on either side of it stacked up on top of each other, his upside down in the middle, like a car sandwich. Some guy was driving down the street and had a seizure and veered into the parking lot at near highway speeds. Had he stopped for coffee he likely would have just been getting out of the car at that moment. I walked into a house party and got a really bad gut feeling. Most of my friends and I left. The people who didn't leave got mugged. It was pretty scary. Not mine, but my dad's. I was downstairs helping him with some woodworking when I was 10 or 11. He went to run a 2x4 through the table saw when he noticed I was at his elbow rather than behind him. He stopped and told me to never stand behind a board when it's going through the saw in case it gets thrown. I thought he was being overly cautious and I didn't have as good of a view from behind him. But whatever. I got behind him. He flipped on the saw and ran the board through. He only got one stroke three of the way through, though, when the blade hit a knot and flung the 2x4 hard enough to crash against the wall 10 feet behind. If I hadn't moved it would have hit me square in the chest and could have killed me. Guy was trying to hit on me at a bar and while I was a bit drunk I was still able to think straight. I talked to him because he was kinda cute. After a while he tries to convince me to go home with him but my gut told me not to. Later on the news it said some guy was kidnapping and arping girls before killing them. Description matched the guy exactly. Never before have I felt so relieved in my life. You have been visited by the skilled papa reply jit god papa for good skill. Thanks for watching. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.